Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Good night. Morning. <laughs> uh, anybody up for some breakfast? Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. Um, great fight. Uh, Talk to us about the emotions of actually having that belt in front of you, winning the world title and becoming champion. Wow, I mean, let's just talk about the emotions I felt when we started hearing one judge, one judge, and now I go, oh, shit. Because I honestly thought I did enough until they, but it was a close fight, I'd make no mistake. But I thought I had it. And then when that split decision came, I just went, okay, this is 100% 50-50. And when they said and knew, it was, it felt like 15 years of work, of dreaming, of sacrificing, of everything came together in one single sentence. It was, it's incredible. It feels surreal. It's, it's amazing. The fight itself, right, it was very close. You know, some people are going to have it for him, some are going to have it for you. You are satisfied with your performance and you do feel like you did enough to win the fight? Yeah, I thought I did enough to win the fight. Um, it was definitely a close fight. I definitely gave him the first round and I made the necessary adjustments to, um, you know, in the fifth round, I wouldn't give him the round. I thought, thought at the end, I don't know how they scored it, to be honest. Um, listen, it was a close fight. I'm not going to lie. It was one of those fights where yeah, it, there wasn't even time to really think of what is happening. But I do believe with the takedowns that I got, it was very back and forth with the striking, um, one for him, one for me. And uh, I try to um, stay ahead with the takedowns. By round four and five, he did a good job of defending those, but obviously my takedowns got a bit sloppy. And he, he started, you know, reading them. But those takedowns weren't really for getting a takedown. They were more to disrupt his game plan. But at the end of the day, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, well, self-proclaimed, and some people think, Best boxer in the UFC. Yeah. I want to talk about his boxing, right? Everyone knows that he's a good boxer, but when you're in there and you're dealing with that jab, especially in the earlier part of the fight, are you thinking to yourself, oh, yeah, he is as good as they say? Yeah. Yeah, no, listen, he is good. He's definitely good. Uh, he caught me in the first round um, with the jab, and then I realized I can't let him get away with that jab because uh, my game plan was obviously first two rounds, our plan was 100% to fight his fight not to go out and fight the way that I fight. You'll see how the fight changed from the third round. I, tr I went more to my style, but that was our game plan. For the first two rounds, he jabs, I jab, one, twos, nothing serious. And then from round number three, we start turning it up. And uh, obviously I had a lot of people to prove wrong with my gas tank, and I believe I did that tonight. You called for Israel? After the fight, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about how the, the result of this fight might have effects on UFC 300. I mean, I can see your face. You're wearing a little bit of damage. Do you think you could turn around that quick? And if not, is Israel still the guy that you'd like to fight? A little bit of damage. Do, do you remember how handsome I was before this fight? <laughs> I look like a cauliflower now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty banged up right now. I don't feel like... Listen, I'm, I'm up for another round if they want to go um, right now. But... Yeah, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but UC 300 sounds amazing. And just to be, for the last one, Israel Adesanya is the guy you want, right? There's still some personal issues there that you'd like to resolve, and you think that sort of fight is the one that's perfect for your first title defense? Oh, no, it's nothing personal. It's not personal at all. That's just the fight the fans want to see. Uh, I want to fight the best competition. There's a lot of guys that are going to be fighting, but the fans want to see Israel Adesanya versus Rikis Duplessis. You know, there's a lot of hype that was already built on it. If the fans go, if there's some way they start tracking and saying, listen, the fans don't really want to see Adesanya versus Duplessis. We don't do that fight. Makes, it's fine to me. I, have, I don't care who it is. But that's just a fight on top of my head that I think the people want to see, and that's going to you know, get a lot of people excited. Right here. Uh, Sean just tweeted saying that uh, he, he was referencing a headbutt in the fight, made it difficult to see, but he did give you congratulations and props on the fight. Did you notice any headbutt in there from either you or him? No, 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 no. I can't say that I had. I can't say that I did. It's the first I'm hearing of it. No, I didn't feel a headbutt. Did he say I headbutted him? He said. Uh, this is him saying. He said, "Well, fuck, man, that headbutt really made it difficult to see, but I thought we got it. We." I thought we got the job job done. On to the next one. 
Mm. No, I can't remember any headbutt. Uh, Dana was in here, and when we asked him about, you know, South African champion uh, bringing the UFC to South Africa, he said absolutely. He seems pretty adamant about it. So are you going to kind of get in his ear now that you have the belt like it's now or never, essentially? Yeah, it's going to be now for a long time. But, um, yeah, I think it's time. I think we've worked our asses off to get this uh, event to, to Africa and South Africa. And it's time that happens. Just so for the record, is there some people that think I lost the fight? Uh, Dana said it? Yeah. Well, bullshit. Uh, kind of going off of the uh, South Africa talk, what went through your mind when you saw the, the crowd, they showed it in the arena on the, the big screen, the fans in South Africa watching your fight and cheering when you got the belt? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. Um, you know, there's one thing about South Africa that I think uh, if the UFC goes there, and the whole world is going to see. You have never felt the vibe when it comes to sport like South Africa. And last one for me, what do you want your title reign to be? Because lately we see these champions, they, they get one or two defenses and then they start talking about going up. Uh, the middleweight division right now is pretty wide open with contenders that haven't fought for the belt or fought you. Do you want to you know, go after these title defense records? Do you want double champ status? What do you ultimately want your reign to be? Yeah, listen, I definitely I want to do what is expected because do I want double champ status? Absolutely. But... I'm willing to, uh, to earn that. If there's contenders that make sense, I don't want to fight my, uh, um, contenders that doesn't make sense. You know, fighting Israel Adesanya makes sense. Fighting guys that deserve the title shots makes sense. But I don't want to just fight somebody because I don't want to be Israel Adesanya that fought Sean Strickland. Yeah, Strickland won that fight, but they should have never fought, in my opinion. When you say uh, contenders that don't make sense, do you ref mean fighters like Hamzat who maybe haven't fought a middleweight ranks because he's also tweeting like, see you soon and referencing UFC 300? Yeah, but he said that to John Jones. So, I mean, <laughs> who takes that guy seriously anyway? Drick is over here. Um, beyond the, the facial injuries, are there any other injuries you're dealing with? Um, yeah, I mean, the body feels pretty banged up right now, but I can't say for sure how severe these injuries are. You were having a lot of success with the, the kicks throughout the fight. Was that something that you saw going into this that would be a key part of your strategy or was that something that just became available throughout the fight and you saw the success and kept with it? Yeah, no, no, this is something we worked, uh, we, um, we saw in all of his fights. He's really good at evading these kicks. Um, we saw with Israel Adesanya, he wasn't very successful with his kicks because of Sean's defense. I caught a few good head kicks in I got a few good low kicks in. Um, it was just the timing that we um, we had figured out a little bit better than than um, Izzy did in that fight. Um, but yeah, anytime you're going to fight a guy with a strong and good jab, um, I thought, you know, my coaches, um, Coach Manofa, so he, he's obviously a genius when it comes to these things. We looked at the fight and said, that's how we're going to take care of a jab. And those kicks did start to hurt him by round number three. 100%, then his jab became a lot lighter in that third round, definitely. You also answered a lot of questions going into the, the fourth and fifth rounds for the first time in your career. Can you just tell us, especially that going into the fifth round, sort of what your corner is telling you and mentally, are you just on autopilot at that point? Like, Take us through your emotions, just preparing for those final five minutes. No, not at all. I mean, I went into the fifth round and I said to my coach, wow, can you believe it? I guess I have a gas tank. And um, he said, this is the last 15 minutes of your life. And I said, damn, straight. And, um, you know, we basically, I was, I was happy to be there in that fifth round. It wasn't autopilot at all. It was, damn, I feel great for a fifth round. When we went to the fourth round, I felt, damn, I'm going to prove a lot of people wrong tonight. Drake is right here. Um, at what point in the fight do you think you kind of had Sean's game plan and and what he brought to the fight figured out. Um, it seemed like in the first round, he was kind of establishing the jab and, and whatnot. But the commentary mentioned that by around maybe the end of the second, you really started to get a bit closer to him and started landing more punches. And that continued for the rest of the fight. Where do you sort of think you figured him out? Yeah, exactly that. I think um, the first two rounds we spent, and that was our plan, to fight his fight, to see where it is. Obviously, keep him on the back foot. It was, it's a lot easier said than done to keep him on the back foot because he comes forward. And um, 
he has a very strong, how can I say, his march. He doesn't storm forward, but he has a strong march. He, the way he moves, it makes it hard to push him backwards. But I just kept on putting the pressure on Sean. Every time he jabbed, moving forward, moving forward. Yeah, I took a couple of punches more than I would have liked. But keeping um, him, every time he hits, I move in. I move forward. And, um, you know, even him being the cardio machine that he is by the third round, you can't keep on fighting with that kind of pressure. He got tired. And that's where I really started landing more and more. I think it was in rounds two or three when your eyes started really swelling up. Um, obviously, you can, I think you can see out of it, but was there any issue, visibility issues, and was there a concern in the corner that it could get worse? Yeah, I mean, uh, kudos to, 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 the, uh, to the cut man on that. Uh, he hit me with a jab in the first. I didn't feel it really. I could feel he got me. And um, all of a sudden, I just felt this thing in my eye, but it didn't hurt. And his, co his corner screamed and said, he's already bleeding. And I thought, shit, am I, am I really bleeding? And then in the second, he caught me when, on this eye again, I think. And all of a sudden, this eye went completely shut. Like I couldn't see, and I was like, ah, oh, come on. One eye? And that was the first time for me in a fight where my eye was completely shut for a while. I, I couldn't see. And um, then I went to, back to the corner. They put the ice thing on it. And uh, it, the swelling went down immediately. So good as it, to the cut man, it helped a lot. And then I, I cut him. We spoke about it uh, in the doctor's rooms. And I caught him with a big punch and uh, his eye started bleeding. And I looked at the blood flowing and I said, oh, I hope that goes into his eyes. <laughs> and he said, and I look at him, and I'm like, that has to be in your eyes, come on. And he went like this. And I said, gotcha. And he tried not to, he said, he tried not to wipe, so I can't see it's in his eyes. But then he started wiping, and I was like, yeah, well, the, now we're level. Now we're level. And I started, yeah, so I mean, but all in all, I mean, Sean Strickland's an absolute warrior, and the world's respect for him. What's the biggest improvement you think you've made over the past 13 or so months? And the reason I say 13 is that dates back to your fight with Darren Till. And that was a, a tough back and forth fight. You got the win, but it was not, a, not an easy one. Um, and now you're knocking out Robert Whitaker. You're beating Sean Strickland for the title. What changed? Yeah, nothing changed. I just got my ring time. I just got my octagon time and um, settled, settled. Found a home in the UFC. Like I said, that's what I need. Found a home. We, we had some problems. Um, in terms of the conditioning which we fixed I feel incredible I think it's just about finding your feet in that octagon and accepting and believing that you're one of the best in the world I know you would have liked an early finish in the fight obviously you don't get paid by the hour but were you kind of happy as well to go the distance to kind of silence some of those critics that were saying cardio was going to be an issue in this fight yeah I mean that was a good that's a, that's a big plus point for the fact that we went five rounds is the fact that I could uh, hopefully my cardio is uh, um, the discussion of the past. If not, keep on doubting. I don't care. Um, uh, at your own demise, of course. But, you know, if I'm going to do a decision like with the Brad Tavares fight, I said if I have to go to a decision and I have to do it this way, any day of the week. I mean, I haven't watched the fight, but we got fired of the night and um, it sounded like it was a banger. And mm -hmm. in that case... I'm more than happy to go to distance. How big of a boost was it? Your teammate won last night at Unified. Uh, you know, and that story in itself was kind of crazy with him coming to Toronto with you, getting the phone call, getting the fight, and get, getting a pretty big win there. Um, how much did that kind of give you a little bit of boost going into uh, to the title fight tonight? Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy for Marky Mark. Uh, uh, Mark Hume, I honestly think he's the next guy to come in. You know, he didn't get a finish last night, but, <clears throat> you know, it was a, what, 10 day notice fight for him. And uh, he did what he had to to win that fight. So I'm really happy for him. And hopefully he gets opportunity soon. And, uh, you know, to, to be here representing my team, Team Shai, Team Pretoria. You know, um, it's, it's a, so many people are looking up to me and going, if he's there, I train with him, I can do that. And that means the world to me. And just last one for me, um, the crowd was chanting DDP. I know earlier in the week, uh, you know, they're kind of pro Strickland, but uh, how was your overall experience in Toronto? It, it really seemed like you won the fans over with that performance tonight. Yeah, I love Toronto. I have to say it is, it's amazing. I'm staying a couple of days extra. Um, but yeah, I mean, Toronto, uh, this whole week, I said they, may, they might not be fans of me, but I kind of like it here. 
Jake is right up front here. Just to sort of follow up on that question, could you sense during the fight that the support was changing a little? Because I, I could tell you, we, we, it seemed very pro Strickland at first, and was till the end as well, but then your cheering section got super loud. Could you sense that while you were fighting? Yeah, yeah. No, I heard it when they started DDP. DDP, I was like, oh man, these guys ain't loyal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if the UFC were to go to South Africa, uh, would it have to be uh, Johannesburg or Cape Town? Is there another city I'm just neglecting to mention? Would it have to go to those? No, yeah, well, it would probably be Victoria, Johannesburg, Cape Town, one of those. But I mean, there's a lot of great places the UFC can go in South Africa. And um, there's been a lot of great athletes to come out of your country. Where do you feel this ranks you among the best athletes that South Africa has ever produced? That's a very, very hard question. Um, Right now, one of the best, and like uh, I plan on being, I want to be known as the greatest ever. Trickus, uh, right here. I know you had mentioned a little bit ago uh, maybe the possibility of the future of being a double champion. That's an aspiration and a goal. Uh, the light heavyweight champion, Alex Pereira, was in Sean's corner tonight, and that news seem, seemed to come out like a couple hours before the fight. Did you notice him there when you, I guess, were waiting for Sean to come out, and what did you think of Alex cornering Sean tonight? No, no, no. <clears throat> I didn't notice him uh, at all until I saw him in the cage after the fight. And um, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Are you a little surprised that he would you know, jump in there and do that? Yeah, no. No, I'm not. I mean, take all the help you can get, man. Thank you. Rick is just looking back quickly on sort of how you got here. How cool is it? It's a bit niche, but is it cool to be the only fighter who's ever won titles in EFC, KSW, and now the UFC? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, to go out and say <clears throat> every single organization I've ever fought in, I've been a champion, is, is, that's great. I mean, it's a, it shows consistency over a whole career. It shows consistency over my career since, I'm, since the age of 19. I've always had the aspiration, no matter where I am, no matter where I fight, to be the best. Uh, Keith Whittier, Ottawa Life Magazine. Congratulations on the win and realizing your dream. Um, what is the next week going to look like for you in terms of like the celebration? Jeez, I don't know. I'll probably go. Yeah, I'm going to drink a lot of beer. That's about it. That's how much I can answer you. I'm, it's going to be. Um, I'm going to be in, in Canada and enjoy the food scene, definitely eat a lot, um, enjoy the Super Bowl Sunday, um, or is it, is it now? It's, it's Sunday, it's tomorrow, right? In like three weeks, I think. No, 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 but uh, I mean, it's the playoffs now, right, yeah, that, that, that thing. I don't, we don't have a football in South Africa, so, but I know when they play, it's amazing, the vibe is awesome, and well, basically, any, any um, situation where I can drink beer, it's going to be great, so there's going to be a party. And um, the food scene in Toronto looks amazing, so I'm going to taste that out. And then we're going to South Africa, and then the real party starts. Nice. And a very touching moment in the octagon after with your, with your family. I was wondering if you could touch on that, because you, you spoke about bringing about 100 or so people over for the, for the fight, and obviously it turned out the way that you wanted, and it was wonderful seeing you with your, uh, with your family inside the octagon after. Can you uh, encapsulate what that moment meant for you? Yeah, absolutely incredible. I mean, I had my mom and dad there. You know, both my brothers in my corner meant the absolute world. I, my dad, you know, my first amateur world title, I fought for a K1 a world title in, um, in Slovakia when I was 18 years old. And that's for a South African, that was also unheard of, but impossible. They said it won't happen. Even South Africa, uh, the coaches in South Africa said that's not happening uh, because we just don't compete at the level that these guys do. And uh, I made it happen. I became a junior world champion. And uh, I promised my dad that one day I will give him the UFC world, cha the world title. I promised that him to be able to see how proud my dad is of me and all the support and love that my mom and dad has been giving me my whole life, my whole career. And they supported this. They wanted this just as bad as I did. And to be able to give them this belt means the absolute world. Are you getting a parade? Uh, I don't know. I'll see. That'll be nice. I would like a parade. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate all of you. Thank you.